Well, welcome back, or if this is your first uh, video, welcome. Uh, in this episode, we uh, go through the process of pressure cooking starter wort for the purpose of, of uh, canning it and, and using it uh, in the future to, to uh, propagate yeast. You can see how we collected our starter wort if you go to the Reiterated Mash Party Guile episode. Uh, but this episode will jump right into canning the wort. And we also pour petri dishes with wort auger toward the end of this episode, uh, again for the purpose of yeast propagation. And in the third episode, you'll see how those yeast, how those uh, petri dishes are used to streak a yeast culture on and, and then um, take from it and, and build it up. So enjoy. So now we're filling our canning jars so that we can can the wort. We're filling it up with about 700 mLs per, per jar. These are quart jars. And you put the lid on and you just finger tighten. You don't want this to be really tight. You really just want to keep this in place. Okay, so keep it nice and loose. Now we're at the point where we're going to pressure cook the, uh, the starter wort as well as some, some glass plates, some petri dishes that we're going to use uh, for yeast culturing, which will be discussed in another video. So we've got it loaded up. We basically loaded it up with seven quart jars like this. Put a rack on top. Remember, you don't want the, uh, the jar sitting on the bottom, so you need something down there. We actually use the lids, um, the rings from old jars just to get it off the bottom. Um, first of all, you want to read your entire owner's manual before you try to do this. Okay, I'm skipping a lot of steps here, but bottom line is know your pressure cooker before you use it. So once you know it, you got to get this thing boiling, obviously. You got to vent it by letting it, letting it vent off so that all the air in there is vented out. And then you go ahead and put on 15 PSI, and we're going to put it on for 15 PSI and let it boil for 20 minutes. Okay? All right, we've already gotten through our first round of uh, pressure cooking, and that's what we've got behind me. You'll see we've got our canned wort, which is now a little darker than it was when it went in. So if we look at a before, go ahead and pan in if you would. Before versus after, you see the, uh, the ones that are pressure cooked are darker. Well, that's fine because it boiled at 250 degrees. You'll also notice the hot break. There is quite a bit of hot break. In fact, it hasn't settled out yet in most of these. And that's not a problem. They're proteins. They're uh, basically yeast nutrient when you're using them to, uh, to, to build up a starter. So no worries there. Um, one thing that is a bit of a problem is that some of the lids haven't sealed all the way. It's still very hot, but the, uh, the lid should indent. And in two of them, it has not. So those, if that happens, those can be put in the fridge and they'll need to be used within a week or two to avoid any contamination. But otherwise, uh, all the rest of them will store more or less indefinitely. Okay, and in addition to doing the, uh, the starter wort, we also went ahead and autoclaved, sterilized some petri dishes. So that's what you can see over here, if you'll zoom in. Um, they're still moist. They're, the moisture's gonna have to, gonna have to dry up. That'll take maybe overnight. As long as you leave them sitting as such, no dust will get in there, they will stay sterile. Uh, and then tomorrow, or even later tonight, if we're, if we're lucky, uh, we will pour the uh, wart auger in there and allow that to solidify so that we can then use it to, uh, to culture yeast, to streak yeasts out. And uh, that'll be another episode. We'll go into that in detail uh, later on, once these are already poured. So you can hear over here, the uh, pressure cooker is sizzling away. We're now going through our second batch. We have another, one more after this uh, to go. And, uh, and we'll be done. So it's basically been a very long day, but uh, it's all good stuff. So uh, stay tuned when we are about to pour the plates. We'll, uh, we'll tune back in. All right. Well, welcome back. This is now uh, about 24 hours later after we've finished pressure cooking, autoclaving all of the glassware. We have a bottle that we made in a previous batch that has already been autoclaved and sealed in an autoclavable uh, container of wart auger, and you'll see the, uh, the recipe on how to make this on 
the screen. But you can see right now that it's solidified. It's basically uh, as it should be once it's poured into the plate. So we need to we need to liquefy it again. You see the plates over here. It took about 24 hours for them to fully dry out. We had to help them along a little bit uh, to get some of the condensation out. But they're fairly dry now and we're ready to pour. So how we do this, you want to do it very carefully. So what you need to do first is to go ahead and break the seal just a little bit. Turn the top just enough so that it, there is some uh, room for pressure to come out. We're going to put it in the microwave and we're going to do power level 5, 30 seconds of power level 5. You're going to have to do that several times. Eventually, as soon as it starts to become liquid again, you're done, you're ready to pour, and we'll get to that step uh, momentarily. Okay, so now I'm going to begin to pour. You want to min minimize the amount of time that each each lid is lifted from the plates because that uh, allows greater opportunity for contamination. Now you want to pour them at least a couple millimeters thick. The thicker they are, the, the longer it will be before they dry out. In fact, my uh, solution is still very hot, so I'm going to keep a mitt on hand just in case it becomes too hot. Yep, it's still extremely hot. Let's so be very careful. Pour as gently as possible to avoid any air bubbles because when it starts to solidify as it cools, it will retain those air bubbles and just make it a little more difficult for you to streak when you go to streak the plate. And you may notice there's condensation forming already. Now that's okay. Go ahead and let it solidify. And then as it solidifies, you'll wrap it in either a plastic bag or aluminum foil. And you'll turn it upside down so that the auger is actually upside down. At that point it will have solidified and it will stay. We've well, finished pouring the plates. They're probably about three millimeters thick each and they're still very hot right now. It'll take a couple hours for them to actually cool down to room temperature, which is where you want them before you turn them upside down to avoid the condensation falling onto the plate. And once you turn them upside down, you'll store them either, in, like I said, in tin foil or a plastic bag, something relatively sanitary, or at least away from uh, airborne dust, and leave them upside down, and preferably in a refrigerated unit, in a refrigerator. That way they, will, uh, they, they won't uh, deteriorate as fast, they won't dry out as fast. And once it's at room temperature and it's cooled, it's ready to be streaked. So that'll be the next segment. We'll streak a plate with yeast.